Good morning everyone, how's it going? Welcome back to the channel. In today's video I want to show you just a very quick continuation of the previous uh, video and this continuation in the Lama Index series. Uh, the idea is that I'm going to be showing you how to use language model integrations with Lama Index, essentially how to call any language model you want with, from uh, Lama Index and how to use it, okay? Now we're going to be seeing the common interface that you can use to call language models and what the re different responses from different interfaces look like. Uh, in this case, I'm going to be using Grok and OpenAI to showcase all of the examples. OpenAI, of course, is the most popular LLM provider and Grok uh, because I want to give you an option to do this for free. Uh, Grok is, of course, free to use if you have a if you're using it for personal projects etc so yeah that's what we're going to be working with right now okay so let's get right into the video all right so just to give you an overview of what the whole thing that what we're going to be doing uh, the first thing that you want to do is to set up your environment now I am going to be using a conda environment to do this so I'm going to activate my conda environment doing conda activate and um, I have already created this environment called Lama Index Course. So once that is activated I'm going to be able to um, use it to install my dependencies actually I think I also have to install to activate it here. So um, let's see so Lama Index Course there we go and now let's actually start uh, running this thing. Uh, the first thing that I want to do is I want to install my dependencies. So as you can see right here, let me just close this right here. Um, uh, the first thing that I want to do is to install Lama Index, Lama Index integrations as well. So we're going to be showcasing this with OpenAI and uh, Grok. Okay. Now OpenAI, of course, because it is the most uh, famous and most commonly used uh, LLM providers, but and we are going to be using Grok as well because I want to give you the option to do this for free. And of course, Grok has a, a wonderful um, offer for uh, your personal projects where you can use the open source models from their service uh, for free. So there you go. We're going to run this like this and it's probably going to take a little bit of time. Uh, it actually didn't take so much because I had already installed it. Um, after that, I'm just going to load my API keys. Uh, in this case, I have added them to a .tnv file, but if you don't have them in a .tnv file, you're going to be able to load them like this. You just type if OpenAI key, not, I mean, of course, by the way, all of this is available in the notebook in the description. But um, yeah, you're going to do if there is no OpenAI key in my environment variables, so I'm going to initialize it. Uh, same thing for Grok. And just for the record, I am using Lama index 0.11.20. There you go. Now, of course, these are already set up. I'm just going to initialize pretty print just for uh, debugging and printing very neatly the things that we're going to be printing right now. And uh, let's actually start um, initializing our language models and calling them with the different uh, methods that we have in the common interface. Okay, so let's do that now. Awesome. So the next thing to do is we're going to want to import our language model. Okay. Remember that we already have set up our API keys. If you have not set up your API keys, this is not going to work. Um, so from Lama Index, I'm going to import from the LLMs module. I'm going to import, I'm going to tap into the Grok module. Remember that we had to install this dependency separately from Lama Index. So you have to install each dependency, each third party um, uh, integration that you want to use, you'll have to install it separately. Uh, from here I'm going to import Grok and uh, right here I'm going to just initialize it like this. LLM equals an instance of my Grok client and I'm going to say which model I want to use with it. Okay. In case you're not familiar with Grok, uh, it's a service that allows you to serve this, uh, this language models for free. Uh, at least at a personal level, they do have some rate limits if you want to do this more professionally, in which case you would be able to get a professional uh, plan. They're super fast, super good, and they allow you to serve these super good uh, open source models, such as in this case we're using Lama 3. Um, so I'm just going to execute this, and now I will have my client for Grok right here inside the variable LLM, okay? 
And the first thing that I want you to see is um, how to use the complete method, okay? Now, complete method is part of this common interface that uh, comes with pretty much any language model that you're going to be able to use in Lama Index. And something particular about this method is that it is a text-to-text -text method, okay? As you can see right here, text-to-text. -text. That's what it means. Essentially, it means that when you're going to call your language model, you're going to be sending a string of text as input, and you can expect to get a string of text as output, okay? Essentially, that's all that this method is doing right here. Now, this is um, rather... Um, different to most ways that we usually call language models because it's a way that was most used, mostly used before we had a switch towards uh, message-based APIs. Uh, before, we had more often than not, a, the APIs from these language models were in the sense that you would send them a piece of text and then you would get the completion in return. Now, the APIs are mostly organized in a sense that you send them a list of messages and then you get the response from the assistant as another message. Um, so just a change in the interface, but um, this adapts to some other circumstances, like if you wanted to, I don't know, just summarize something or something more quickly that is text-to-text -text based, this is the method that you want to use. And as you can see, the type of response that you get from this is completion response, which is different to the kind of response that you would get from the other method, which is chat method, which we're going to see in just a moment. But uh, just to show you the conveyor, the microscope, the real, like the complete object of the response that we got, here it is. I'm just converting it into a dictionary and printing it. And uh, as you can see right here, um, we have the text. So it, here is the text that was printed when I printed the whole thing. Uh, here we have the raw object, which is the chat completion. I, I mean, we'll see that a little bit later. Um, and uh, yeah, essentially this is all that we're getting. Now let's take a look at the chat completion, I mean the, the chat method. All right, so now let's take a look at the chat method and how is it different to the uh, complete method that we just saw a moment ago. As you can see here, what I'm doing is calling the LLM, but instead of using dot complete, I am using dot chat. And that essentially means that it, instead of taking a string of text as an input, it is going to take a list of messages as input and it is going to return to me a message, okay? This is going to allow me to have more conversational applications. And actually, this is the way that most applications work nowadays. Um, in the past, a couple of years ago, uh, most of the APIs were text-to-text -text, uh, centered. In mo nowadays, pretty much all of the APIs that expose language models are message-based APIs. So this is essentially how uh, most APIs are going to work and how most of the logic of your application is going to work. It also uh, is better because it allows you to add a system message, okay? In case you're not familiar with it, the system message is essentially just the first message that you give your entire assistant to give it a personality or give it instructions about how it is supposed to uh, react and respond to the user's queries. Uh, in this case, my very simple system uh, message is you are Sherlock Holmes, so just giving it a very quick personality. And uh, here I have uh, another message from a user who framed Roger Rabbit, because why not? Then we have um, the assistant. This is the assistant now responding. I am not sure, but I can help you find out. Tell me, joke. okay, so this probably not. Let's just erase this and let's just send this like this, okay? And let's see what it returns. As you can see, the assistant says any string in case, my dear fellow, curious affair, Roger Rabbit, etc. So it's probably going to help me uh, figure out who, shamed, who framed Roger Rabbit. And as you can see, uh, this right here is actually a message in the response. It is not just text. We're going to see it under the microscope in a little bit. But the convenient part about this is that you can take this message right here and append it to the end of my list of messages, and then you're going to start to have a history of the conversation. And note that you can send pretty much a set of messages to the chat uh, method right here, which means that you're going to be able to append the message to the conversation and then send the whole thing again, and then append the response and then the whole thing, send the whole thing back again. And this is essentially how you create a assistant that has conversational memory, okay? so. 
as you can see, this is the method that you're going to be using most of the time. And let's just take a look at it under the microscope. As you can see, the returned object was actually a chat response object. And um, if we actually take a look at it under the microscope, we're going to co convert it into a dictionary and print it. And let's see, so we have the completion tokens and the prompt tokens, total tokens that were um, um, spent during this interaction. Here we have the message. Let's take a look at it. Um, let me just print it like this. Response.message. Let me just print it as well as dictionary. And there we go. So here we have the content of the message, an intriguing case, etc. Let's make it a scrollable element. And you have the role. And you can see that the role is the assistant. So we can basically take this entire message and we can append it back right here. And we can just resend, I mean, send another query, send a follow up question, and continue the conversation with our assistant. Okay? So that is essentially how the chat uh, model uh, works. Uh, sorry, how the chat uh, method works. Now let's consider the streaming version of both of these methods, okay? All right, so both, uh, both of these methods that we have covered so far actually have a streaming equivalent, okay? So a streaming version of them. Uh, in this case, for example, this one right here is the stream complete method. It does exactly the same thing as the complete method. It is a text-to-text -text method. But in this case, instead of returning the entire generated content all at once, it is going to return one token at a time as it is being generated, which means that as a user, you're going to have feedback and you're going to see that the LLM is generating something immediately after you send your query. And that is very important for user experience. Uh, in other words, this is exactly what pretty much any LLM application does nowadays, like ChatGPT, um, um, Claude, etc. All of those, when you send your query, it starts generating the content right immediately after you send it, okay? That's exactly what streaming means. And in this case, as you can see, I am using an LLM from OpenAI this time, just to show you that you can use these, um, these methods to pretty with pretty much any language model that you want. In this case, all that I am doing is switching this line right here, and I'm going to be using, that allows me to use another language model instead of uh, the Grok models that I was using above. So that is very, very convenient. Now, as you can see, I am just um, um, creating my response right here using stream complete. And after that, I am going to be able to actually just display the generated content as it is being generated. So. I can print it for token in response. I'm gonna print each token, I mean the text from each token. Now this, of course, um, I mean, I feel like there's a problem right here. It's, I think that it comes from the fact that uh, my notebook is not designed for asynchronous operations. But um, as you can see, it actually returned one token at a time and it yielded the whole thing one and one after another as it was being generated. This is very convenient if you want to create your own applications. And of course, just to show you, the type of this object that was returned is actually a generator. Uh, and the same equivalent exists for Lama index, actually. So you can just do from Lama index core LLMs and you import the chat message, just like we did before, exactly the same thing. So you have a system message, then a user message. By the way, the system message is optional, but it's usually better to have it because it gives your LLM instructions about how to how to behave. And uh, once you have that, you can use stream chat, which essentially does exactly the same thing as the chat version that we had above, but in a streaming by streaming each token at a time. Okay, as you can see, the return value is also a generator. So there you go, we have effectively covered how to use Lama Index with any, pretty much any language model that you want, as long as they have an integration with it. Uh, we have covered the common interface that is exposed for all of these language models, that is to say the text-to-text -text and the message-based um, interfaces. In the next video, we're going to be covering how to use these language models for getting structured output out of them, okay? That is to say, if you don't want to get 
just a string of text as a result or a message but if you want to get something more specific with a specific schema like for example a JSON file with very specific keys and value types okay uh, so there you go um, in case you're interested in that you can check out which language models are available um, as an integration with Lama Index by going right here in their documentation you're going to go to component guides then you're going to go to models and within here you're going to go to language models and right here you're going to go to available LLM integrations okay and right here you have all of the integrations that they have available um, on Lama Index as you can see they have Anthropic, they have Grog, they have Hugging Face integrations uh, of course they have OpenAI etc so be sure to check that out if you want to check if you want to try your own language models with uh, Lama Index okay so there you go uh, hope this video was useful for you uh, don't forget to subscribe uh, to get the next parts of this course or to see other tutorials in this um, in this channel okay thank you very much for watching and I will see you next time Thank you.